This is the new normal. Joburg to Los Angeles to the rest of the world with Tebow Touch and Bishop Noel Jones. Welcome to the new normal, channel 129 on BET. My name is Tebow Touch and I'm happy to be a gateway of these great conversations that are taking place on this show. We are not just talking, we are building ourselves, equipping ourselves during this lockdown to best feed our minds with conversations that are so thought provoking preparing us to take charge as we go back into the economy very soon as we go back into society. But prior, what does it mean? What does it mean spiritually? What does it mean for you emotionally? What does it mean for you financially? We are all experiencing an economic meltdown, but we shall never experience a spiritual and a mental meltdown. That's why I have a guest in studio and I call him a co-anchor, Bishop Noel Jones, joining me all the way from Los Angeles. So you get to the stage now where you're grown enough to know because you've been through enough to know that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I didn't know that when I was a technon, but I know it as a Hueyos that no weapon formed against me shall prosper because I've come through weapon after weapon after weapon after weapon after weapon and I'm still here. God despises what he does not like. Mm. And one of the things that it says he does not like is he does not like the proud look. He does not like the lying lips. Yeah. yeah. He does not like the attitude that we have that seems to give us a superior disposition. Okay. A and that's, all right, it's Proverbs 6, 16. It says this. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Right. The proud look, mm. that attitude of haughtiness that we have because we don't have things in proper perspective. It is not your car that is significant now, your house, the clothes you wear. It is not the club, it is not the bar that you frequent, the, the pub that you love. It is, it is not the museum, it is not the, the, the games, uh, it is not the season's tickets, it is not the box seats. Right now you're dealing with your life. Yes. So you are now down to earth, you were stripped naked because now it's life and death. So you can't walk in with a proud look now when you're dealing with life itself and you're going for your life. Then right beside that, the next thing he hates is a lying tongue. Mm. You see, yes. and hands that shed innocent blood, heart that divides wicked imagination, feet that be swift to run to mischief, false witness that speaketh lies and soweth discord among his brethren. You see, when it comes now to the basic thing of life and death, when we're dealing now with just straight, am I going to live to see tomorrow? Am, can I get around? I can't even get around my loved ones. Now I'm dealing with, can I say this? We are living. Hmm. I haven't been living like this in a long time. I am alive now. Why? Because I'm careful, I'm looking, I'm watching, I'm cleaning up, I'm doing things because I have the threat of losing my life. I am alive. I hear you, Bishop. I like that. Luleka, yes. Luleka has a very important question and i like to acknowledge Luleka. Thank you for being part of the conversation. Luleka says, but Bishop, most of us have never dealt with this before. This virus much as it's affecting our health, but it's affecting our mental health. How do we know we are not approaching insanity? Well, the whole point is the mere fact that you can ask that question and the mere fact that that question is being asked uh, of me through you and the individual who asked it is indicative of the fact 
that they have not yet become insane because they're dealing now from a rational viewpoint dealing with the possibility of slipping into a psychological depression and a psychological debilitation yes. that will take them into a place where they might need some medicine or some counseling the truth is we are on right now hoping that in this dialogue we can push back any thoughts of insanity amen any thought of suicide yes any thoughts yes. of yes. homicide yes we're trying to get people to understand that all of us are feeling the brunt of this some of us are seeking for answers and as we seek for answers in dialogue we are keeping you from slipping off the edge the reason you ask the question is because you're getting ready to combat whatever you're feeling in terms of depression, sadness, sorrow, and a lack of a, the ability to cope. You can cope with this. That's so true. That's so true, Bishop. And yes, my sister Mingi, what a time to be alive. Now, Bishop, one of the questions that came from also one of our viewers was, you just made mention that we, we lost a very dear pastor who I was with in Los Angeles on your birthday in January. Yes. Can we relate his loss as part of God's will? Was this his destiny? Was he was this part of his journey? Or he just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time and contracted the disease? Well, I think that we, we have to understand certain things that are significant. Yeah. I, 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 I don't want to place any blame on him in any way at all. But if the blind lead the blind, the scripture says they both shall fall in the ditch. Okay. I think I talked to you about this before in some conversation. Yes. I had a problem about the first person falling into the ditch because I said, if he's blind and he chooses to leave, yeah. then by all means, God, let him fall in a deep hole because he was too precocious. He thought he had the power to lead and uh, he didn't. But have some mercy on the second blind man. Ooh. But here's what I discovered over a period of time. And okay. I discovered in life. That I have a certain responsibility to my children. And I have the responsibility to my children. I'm in a car. They're in the back seat. And I used to do some terrible things when I was younger. I'm at 125 miles an hour in the middle of the night while my kids are in the back seat. Mm. Those children of mine are at my mercy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, now, now I'm, I've already blown the angels because the angels left me at the speed limit. I'm at 125. There's no angels. There is no protection. I'm breaking the laws of the land, and I've got the kids in the back. Now, I reach back to slap one of them. I lose control of the car, and all of us die. We all died because I didn't handle my responsibility, and they were a part of my care. Take it to another level and see my brother, who should be alive today, yes. had the administration that runs the country gave us a signal that said, shut down now. Woo! Because they didn't shut us down. All right. Because they downplayed they use their influence irresponsibly and my brother has died Ma, god Ooh. see what we have to understand is for those of us who decide we want to be public figures for those of us who want to be heads of government for Ooh. those of us who want to be preaching in pulpits telling people how to live their lives for those of us who want to dictate how our family, how our children operate, yes. we ought to yeah. use our influence responsibly. Preach and it. we ought to operate for their benefit and not for our own. Preach it, Bishop. We just had an That's incident. That's what got my brother killed. Bishop, we just had an incident uh, two days ago. Our Minister of Communication was uh, reprimanded by the president, actually been suspended for the next two months because she posted a picture having lunch with a former deputy minister of education, uh, higher, higher learning. And it was quite irresponsible, but the president was under the pressure to say, if anybody has to take my orders, it has to be those in my cabinet, those who are part of my Congress. Um, and as a result, she got suspended for two months of her duties. This is the Minister of Communication, the most essential key 
focal point of the country who leads the, the, the regulators, the, 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 the entire communication. But does that say those who now have influence, their misuse of influence, they should be judged harshly for not being able to exercise it wisely? And those who are also in the point of being public figures, are we meant to be leading by example to such an extent that some of the decisions that we make might be inconvenient for our day-to-day -day life, but for the sake of an ordinary person down who's in Alexandra, Soweto, Kuala Anga, for them to get the message, we should lead by example. Without a question, without a doubt, because obviously, if I am going to say something to you and, and, and send out an edict, send out a command for the country, and then you see me doing the very opposite when you have communicated to me the seriousness of the situation. Now you, now it's ambivalent. Now it's ambiguous. Yeah. Now I don't know really what to believe, and I'm going to generally lean to the place of less resistance. Okay. So if I am thinking I want to have a good time and a party, uh, if, oh, yeah, that's what they said, but I just saw the Minister of Communication sitting out without a mask, without gloves, in a public environment, enjoying themselves, and they posted it. I mean, please, it sends mixed signals. Right. Leadership, this is the sacrifice of leadership, mm. and that is, even though you could do this and be okay because you've checked to see that the individual you're with has no problem and everything is fine but what signal am i sending to the individual Hallelujah. who does not have the means that i have Ooh! right bishop this is the sacrifice i make because i'm in a leadership position Because let's talk about preachers. People like I look at how everybody wants to become a preacher and have a big church and be idolized and be put in a pedestal. But now, do we let's do we literally consider the enormity of responsibility that goes with the need to lead people? Uh, 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 and, and also, I mean, on social media, you got brands calling people uh, influencers. And hey, I've got a blue tick. Thank God I don't have, I don't need it. People got, I got a blue tick on my social media. So all of a sudden I'm an influencer. But what does it say about you on social media when you're posting your breakfast, gourmet, you're posting your living, your environment, how you live. I'm quite sensitive. Not, I, I, I've tried my best not to actually post my lifestyle because somebody right now is trying to get access to proper running water, electricity. What does it say about social media and those who are in a position of influence sharing with the rest of the world how they're living under this lockdown? Well, the, it's, it's quite significant and very important that if you're posting where you live and the level you live on, if you're posting your affluence and you're posting how significantly important you have become from a wealth point of view, if you're posting that, and if it is your intent to say to the rest of the world, I live on this level and I'm about to help you to come as close to this level as you can get or beyond this level. I am just showing you where I am thinking about taking you right. or where I'm praying for you to go. And I am going to come down into the grassroots and I am going to help bring you to where I am. Right. I'm going to show you how I get there. You see, one of the things about pastors and preachers who preach health, wealth and prosperity. Yes, sir. And preach uh, Americanism and capitalism for the doctrine, for, for gospel. One of the things that they have to do is they have to show it. Okay. Because if I'm going to tell you this is what God is doing, then I have to show it. But what they won't tell you is that because you want it so bad, you are now being in their hands to manipulate you to give to them for them to keep living that lifestyle because they're not getting that lifestyle from corporate America. They're not getting that lifestyle from years of investment, from having a rich family. Yeah. They came up just as broke and poor as anybody 
God helped us to get on television. Television opened us up to the world. So now we can sell our books and our tapes. We can sell master classes. We can get money because we have influence around the world. Now we turn around and say we don't live off tithes and offerings anymore because our books and the things we sell and all the things we do, that helps us. Foolishness. I hear you. It was the poor person's money that put us in a position where we don't need their money now. Woo! But it was their money that put us in the position not to need their money, and we need to say thank you to them. We don't need to take our influence and show opulence. I said to one of my sons in the gospel, you don't need to show a Rolex watch. You don't need to show your car or your house. Right. Because that's not going to build somebody's faith in God. All it's going to do is point to you as a user, as a taker, as an individual who's putting nothing back, and it's going to send a bad signal. When we operate in truth, yes, sir. and when we operate in sensitivity to others, okay. we do not stuff our lifestyle down other people's throats when we realize that 75% of the world is going to bed in squalor, dirty water, bathing in nasty water by some river, and it is the reason why we have so much trouble in the world. Man. It's the rich against the poor because we want to stuff our lifestyle down somebody's throat and brag about what we have. And here's what God says. Tonight thy soul Woo. is required of thee. My goodness. And that's what's happening now with this disease. So so I want to I wanna ask... And, and maybe I should have asked you this personally. I was so garrulous, I don't even think I answered the question. You No, you did. You got it. I okay. think the point is made, if you're in a point of influence and you are showcasing the affluency and how blessed you are, give people the roadmap of how you got there. Be have the ability yeah. to come down. Have the ability to come down to grassroots level and show and how others can there. come up. I love it. Now I want to move to another question here, and uh, this is one of the questions that's coming from our fellow followers who's part of the dialogue right now to say 70% of African, I mean, when you look at the statistics, this virus, at the inception of how you know, it came about, we were making jokes that black people don't get corona. There are some influential people who have been in the media saying, um, this is not for blacks, it's going to hit white people. Now, 70% of these fatalities are African Americans. Are we were we irresponsible at that time to make that assumption, which I know we were, but if 70% are African American, does this got to do with the inequality of wealth in the United States that preaches to be the land of the free? Well let me let me let me outline what's going on with that. Yes sir. First of all you don't have as as African Americans and Hispanics as that part of the population that is not as wealthy as my uh, Caucasian brothers and other parts of our social environment in yes. America. You will find that health care is lacking. True. The proper diet is lacking because of the financial and because of the the, the divide, the great divide in America between those on the bottom and those on the top. That's true. The top 3% of Americans increased their wealth by, I think, $20 trillion in the last 20 years. 3%? The bottom, the bottom 3%, the bottom 50% of Americans lost $900 billion over the same time. The rich are getting richer and the gap is getting bigger. So what's happening now is the people on the lower echelon are those who can't afford health care, those who can't eat properly yeah. and have the right diet. Right. So they end up with diabetes. Uh, they end up with high blood pressure. They end up with all kinds of lung problems right. and all kinds of situations that c arise from lifestyle based on poverty, living at the poverty level. Because of that, no health care, no income sufficient enough to take care of the right kind of diet. They have no facilities for serious exercising. 
oftentimes they're running in their own neighborhoods at their own risk because you leave a few people to have to go after a lot of, of substance so they're beating each other up mm. because you give a little substance to a lot of people right so now you've got a lot of violence and you've got a lot of situations where everybody is under manned from the point of view of enjoying life yes so now here is the hit of a disease when the disease hits and you don't have i'm telling you one of the preconditions one of the pre-existing conditions when you're poor is not having health care not having the right enough money to walk in there and get a ventilator please if I walk in and I have enough money and you walk in and you're broke, you're going to be dying in the ER before anybody sees you. But I'm going to go in and get a ventilator because of who I am, because of the money I have. This is killing poor people because they don't have the things that normal people should have My to God. have an existence. My God. That's why Obama, in his sensitivity, he did two things. One is, he understood that pandemics happen. I'll get a team out there. That's correct. I'll get a team, so wherever it happens in the world, we'll aggressively attack it. Right. If I get it in Africa, I'll help the Africans, but I'll keep it from coming to our shores. If it happens in Asia, I'll help the Asians, Keep it from coming to our shore. Then he turned around and had health care for everybody. If you got health care for everybody, if everybody in your country can go in and have health care, then you will have a system that is broad enough to handle a pandemic like this without it being total collapse. Yep. Without having total collapse. Why? Because the healthcare system is for the privilege. So now you got the masses coming. You don't have the room. Why but, don't but we have the room? Hello. Because it was only for the privilege. Hello. It wasn't for the masses. Oh man. So now you bring masses on us. Case close check mate i don't think there's any listen end of discussion bishop we want to move to a second part that we will get a close correct and I, and i think we left it uh, slightly open gluttony is a sin i know we emphasize indulging with alcohol and stuff the, the the sin of gluttony because how in the world you have people you have people walking around you know uh, overweight and and some people say it's medical but some uh, I, I generally think, especially with black communities, and here's a sad um, distortion: when you lose weight and you are, you, when when someone is, is 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 cutting and is lean, the people will say, black people will say, man, you're not eating right. Are you okay? You're looking frail, and we associate wealth with looking big. I I I. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm quite, it's, it's, it saddens me when people associate a big belly with doing well. Oh man, life is good. You, you looking great, man. And as soon as you're looking tailored and, and, and lean, you're not well. This is a problem. It's a serious problem. And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you that we, we, we have been slaves. You've been in apartheid. We have been slaves uh, for so long and the, the vestiges still are upon us. We still have the mentality in terms of our eating. The slave did not get the, 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 the decent cut of the beef. The slave did not get the, dip, the decent cut of the pig. The slave had what was left over after the master handled his business. The slave got the lesser part. Now, generationally, this has continued. It has continued from generation to generation to generation until now it is embedded in our DNA so deeply psychologically that it's hard for us to break from the habits of our forefathers and on and on and on. We are cursed generationally by the way we eat. Then add to that the poverty 
that we have to endure, add to that the minimal amount of health care and the education that we lacked in terms of our diet and exercise and the way to prolong and to strengthen our lives. So at the end of the day, we have people who are eating excessively. It ain't all thyroid. It's, I, I, I eat when I'm nervous. I eat because it's my enjoyment. And particularly when you're a child of God and, and you ain't smoking a joint and you ain't sipping on, on some uh, uh, a gray goose. Uh, the goose is gray and the, uh, and the turkey is wild. And uh, you're not sipping on any wine. So consequently, your only pleasure, you, you can't run around with, no, with any sex and, and you're not married. And, and, and the only pleasure you have is your food. So now, because food is my pleasure, yes. I'm now yes. eating for pleasure. I'm not eating to sustain my life and operate and do what I need to do. Okay. But I'm eating for pleasure. Now, when you're in a position of responsibility, yes, sir. and, yes, and sir. like when you're in my position, yes. where, yes. where people around the world are, are looking to me, you're looking to me to be on my best intellectually, cognitively, creatively. You're looking for me to be on my best studying yes. because yes. you're looking, because I have a responsibility. So I can't come in, I can't walk around drunk. I can't walk around out of my mind yes. because of alcohol. Yes. Right. But at the right. same time, I can't walk around out of my mind drunk from excessive eating and I'm eating so much until I come into the room, I'm half asleep, right. I can't think right. right, I can't operate right. right. I have to right. operate in temperance. Yes. So I'm saying to everybody out there who somebody else is depending on you, you can't walk around popping five or six different pills because you got high blood pressure. And, and if, you, if you're taking pills, if you're taking pills for high blood pressure, it is to get you to the place where you can get off these pills because these high blood pressure pills are killing your kidneys. Yes. They're tearing yes. up your liver. Yes. And at the end yes. of the day, the side effect is going to destroy you. Sure. It's better to have the pain of discipline than the pain of consequence. Woo! The pain of discipline and the pain of consequence. Now, Bishop, what does it say about some preachers? And I've been to church. I was raised in church. I'm third generation of the gospel. I've been to churches since you spoke about those who are in a position of influence. I've been to churches where a pastor couldn't even get up from his seat. Here is the ushers and everybody calling. It's time to hear from the man of God. And he is squeezed. In a chair that takes three people my size and can't even get up. It is such a hassle. What does it say? What does it say about his mental state? If it says it says that he has completely forgotten the significance of the example that he needs to set. Now, if you look carefully in what's happening with this coronavirus yes. and the pre-existing conditions, yes, sir. obesity, yes, sir. obesity is one of them. And it's taking my friends out like nothing ever before because the disease goes after the obese yes. and my yes. and my pastors and my brothers yes. who yes. are in that state are dying when this disease comes i am just simply saying we need to set the right kind of example along with having church every sunday yes, sir. we need to yes, have sir. health fairs we need to have experts, nutritionalists. We need people to come in to teach our people how to eat properly, how to save their lives. And when you have something to give to someone else, and when we're depending on you, make the sacrifice Amen. and Amen. stay healthy. Amen. Please. I, I was, I was, I was, I want to say this and I never got a chance to tell you. I was quite marveled and I really appreciate what you did. When I went to City of Refuge, uh, I went to the back where you used to have the tape ministry and I realized you opened a school in church and this this was incredible. I realized that you're expanding the school. You're taking people into the church. It's no longer just a place for you to just fellowship, but it's also becoming a center of information, education from early childhood learning.
Should we have, uh, don't you think, Bishop, this is a high time where churches should also have medical, financial, uh, weight programs to ensure that the same congregants are mentally as spiritually healthy, but also mentally and physically healthy as well. And to get away from this, just being a Bible study place and Sunday church service. Shouldn't we lead by example? Those who are in a position to hear from above and be having all this wisdom, start transforming the actual, uh, what the actual building is and transform it to being a center of solution in society. And, that, and, and you couldn't have said it better, and that's where we are right now. Yes. After yes. this abnormal is over and we move into the new normal, right. the church that will thrive and the church that is going to be alive yes, sir. is yes. going to be a church that has its community at heart and presents a holistic presentation of the Christ event. Here is what we have to do. Right now, we are focusing only on my kingdom is not of this world. I have a relationship with the, you, the, with the Unification Church, with some great people on that side, and they focus primarily on thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What has to happen now is we have to put a bridge in uh, I mean, people decry uh, uh, Dr. Hak Jahan Moon, uh, and they say it's a cult, and they can say what they choose. At the end of the day, they are dealing with issues that are very pertinent to those of us who are apostolic, those of us who understand the name of Jesus in baptism, receiving the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. We understand that very well, and we live by that. But that prepares us for heaven. That prepares us for that new birth experience, that relationship with God that begins here. But the relationship with God also says to us, you got to feed those who are hungry, clothe those who are naked, visit those who are in prison. You got to do yes, some sir. things on earth. We got to educate our kids. We have them, um, they won't even come to our churches now. We have to educate our kids. We have to give them the tools. My granddaughter is choosing now between Harvard and Yale. Hallelujah. Now, what kind of difficult, now her difficulty is which one do I go to? You follow? They gotta be educated. They've gotta understand how to eat, understand how to enjoy life. How to, see, I couldn't enjoy life. So, so you hold a pendulum on this side and you let it go, it swings all the way over there. I, I, I'm so radical because you didn't give me balance growing up. I must know how to enjoy life, know what's good socially, know where to go socially. Everything social is not sin. I must enjoy. So I'm saying to those of us that will listen, you need balance. You need balance. All right? Have balance in your life and, and, and you'll get more out of it. If you're going, to, if you're going, if, if any church is going to be impacting after this abnormal, the new normal will be more insightful and more sensitive people. People are going to ask, why have we had all the these African-Americans in church, all these Hispanics in church, and we ended up being the target of the disease because of our health situations. Why is it that you, in projecting Jesus Christ for our future after death, why didn't you help us to understand how to live while we are here so that when a pandemic comes, we are not the target? of the pandemic, we are not the ones who fall first. Why haven't you brought us to the place of education so that we can be a part of the solution instead of always being a part of the problem? Why haven't you brought our kids to a higher level? Why haven't you demanded them to reach a greater level through education, through Christian education? Why haven't you helped us 
to gain a political strength. Where is our bank? Where are our credit unions? Why do we have to go across the street for everything we want when we're giving you all of our money all the time? Bishop, ooh, you've closed it. Ah, we're gonna have to, that, that, unto him who much is given, to our leaders, not just in church, including those in political positions. I think this conversation is calling upon us to reflect, be true to the calling, and become better people in order for us to conquer this COVID-19. Bishop, it's been a blessing. I am so grateful. Um, I have no words. You've just, again, you did it again tonight. Um, to everybody who's part of the conversation, you'll agree. We couldn't ask for more. And we want to say thank you. And at some point, I would like to see this happening in Johannesburg. I think number one trip. I know you're always out in South Korea and other parts. We need this leadership conference from Bishop Noel Jones. And if you agree with me, send me your comment right now on Instagram. Follow Bishop Noel Jones Global on Instagram and IMT will touch. Bless your heart, man. Let me just get off the conversation. How has this lockdown in made you a meaner, meaner, meaner chess player? Oh, Noel, uh, I've got to play again. I, I tell you, I've got to play uh, one of my son's uh, passion, Java, uh, because he beat me the last time. One game I beat him, but uh, he mastered me, so I've got to get into that. Uh, I haven't been able to study it as I should because I've been working so hard on so many different programs, and yes. Uh, yes. right now I'm dealing with a doctor who... Uh, a, a black African-American doctor who says he's got his hand on this virus. So I just talked to one of my uh, multi-millionaire uh, members and we're going to see if we can get him, uh, get him heard because I think he's got something for this virus. Really? Uh, really? Al, Al Sharpton was on with Sean Combs and some other dignitaries. They were on the other day on a Zoom on, and they said, we have to handle this ourselves. And then out of the blue, I was on with a doctor who spoke, and uh, there's a doctor who has some patents out there wow. uh, that he, wow. he went to the NIS and they didn't really respond like they should. Wow. But I want to get wow. him heard. So that's where we are now. And if we can do that, then I asked him, I said, if you had the money today, when could you start serving and, and, and uh, medically? Yes. He said Monday. Yes. He said Monday. Really? Really? So I want to have him heard. Bishop, and we'll see where we go. what are we talking about numbers? What kind of numbers are we talking about? Uh, a couple of millions? Big numbers. Yeah, he, he would need about 20 million. Man, we pray. Because this is, this is I, I, I generally think somebody with a solution is not going to come from some higher places. I think God is going to, like the Bible says, uh, you know, I'll use stones. God is going to use the underdog. Um, someone, you know, who's going to have revelation that is not coming from the most prestigious Cedar Sinai's of this world. Well, if this comes to pass, then certainly we'll know it's God uh, because it was, again, it was one of those meetings that we didn't plan for. It just happened naturally, organically, it came about, and uh, he's going to be heard. Uh, one of my members, one who I mentioned a while ago, said i will make sure he's heard and so that's it and then my governor would be interested in that too uh, my governor would be interested al sharpton would be interested so uh we're going to throw it out there and see where it goes bishop that's incredible man and how's the rest of everybody how's grace have you spoken to everybody's grace? good grace grace is good grace is locked down in jamaica uh, locked down in the house she can't go to the they won't let her go swimming or anything like that in the ocean. <laughs> but Grace is doing well, and uh, <laughs> she's doing what she does. She's all right. <laughs> I know what that means. <laughs> so she's all right. So, amen. And Chris, uh, Chris amen. Fine, uh, amen. So everybody's good. <laughs> Th thank you, thank you, Bishop. We love you. We connect. We connect again. You're so incredible. And uh, and please keep us in your prayers. South Africa loves you, uh, and I mean it. I like people who said Africa loves you. No, South Africa loves you genuinely, Bishop, and the whole continent. And I was I was to be there. You know, I was to be 
uh, today I was to be, you know, with, uh, in, in Santon, with the AOG in Santon. Right. I was to be there today, but because of this, we were not able to come and not able to be there. But as soon as this thing clears, yes. I will be yes. back in Santon and all over the place with the professor again. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, professor was such a marvelous person. What's his last name again? I don't want to ruin it. Navutanda. Uh, and, uh, I, and I shout out to him. I shout out to the governor. I shout out to the mayor. Yes. I shout out yes. to the financial person that I met. Yes. I shout out to all of the wonderful peoples at Grace International. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. That's it. Love you, Bishop. Love you. God and bless. AOG, I shout out to you. Yes, sir. Man, what right. an honor. What an honor. Ladies God and bless gentlemen, you, man. this is this for those who didn't get the um, um, the full entire hour, you're going to get the special on BET. But great news are coming your way. Uh, we'll be airing this Friday between 5 and 6 p.m. So stay tuned. Stick around. We are not done. This is just the beginning. We thank God that we have Bishop Noel Jones available for these dialogues. For me, Tibo Touch, good night. And Bishop said it. I cannot have my dinner, so I guess I'll eat tomorrow morning. It's after 10 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, have a salad. I'll have, I'll have a salad. Tonight I'm going to deal with the pain of discipline than dealing with the pain of consequence. We've got to that point, ladies and gentlemen, where we are not saying it's over. We're just putting it on pause. We'll be back again next Sunday between 5 and 6 p.m. My name is Tibo Touch. I want to thank Bishop Jones. I want to thank all my friends. I want to thank Juan. I want to thank uh, Katrina. I want to thank all. I, I, I wish I could drop all the handles. Shout out to Malusi. Shout out to Sipeng. Shout out to everybody. I see you. Tabo Molotani. God bless you. We're back on channel 129. This is BET Africa. Follow the handle on Instagram and Twitter. Next Sunday, we have a special topic that's going to change the way you view your space and how you project yourself in society. This is the new normal every Sunday between 5 and 6 p.m. The devil is a liar. These dialogues are going to make us better people. We are going to come out better after COVID-19. Trust me. Follow the hashtag. Um, it's uh, the new normal. Or you can hit me live and direct at IntiwaTouch on Twitter and Instagram. Thanks to all the essential workers. It shouldn't take this pandemic to regard your significance. You are essential post-COVID-19. That nurse on her way to work right now for night shift, you are essential. That driver who's delivering my vegetables, you are essential. Security guards, law enforcement, soldiers, you are essential. My friends, on this show right now, you are all essential. God bless. Let's wear our mask and gloves. I'm about to do that right now as I leave. Here, right here. I got my mask. I'm not playing. It is real. We'll be connecting next Sunday between 5 and 7 p.m. And if you do love the show, keep following us on our social handles. We'll be giving you more and more and more the new normal. This is Tibo Touch, and I'm glad to be back again next Sunday. God bless. <laughs>